Welcome to Thirst Impressions. I'm Spencer. Today we're talking about Peace Goes and Promises. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm Belinda. And I am Will. Who's ready to drink an egg? I'm excited for this one. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how much I mean how much I'm gonna like it, but that's okay. You don't have to like it. Sorry. It's, it's it's an adventure, right? And I remember the first time I had my peace go first person peace go sour. And um, I don't remember where it was. Do you remember where it was, Kevin? I remember Kevin was there and I remember being dazzled. I was like, this is amazing. It's so good. Um, I think it was at HS so, HSL, maybe downtown Salt Lake. It probably was. Yeah. I think that was a lot of where we did our early, uh, you know, exploratory drinking, um, which was a great place to start, actually, because they had some really great uh, bartenders there. They probably still do, but we don't go around there very often, especially since COVID. So. All right, let's make one. Mm, okay, I remember thinking like, oh, it has an egg white in it. Okay, I'll try it. Um, so, Pisco. Pisco is from, Kevin? Peru. What is Pisco? Uh, Pisco is actually, uh, basically there's eight types of varieties of grapes uh, that can be used to make Pisco. Uh, and sometimes they're blended or sometimes it'll be a single varietal um but it's basically they make the wine and then you know and early on before they store it or anything then they distill the wine and in order to be peruvian pisco um, it has to be distilled in a copper pot and it can't ever be stored in um any kind of barrel, any, barrel. Any, any anything that would give add flavor dimension to it so like you notice in the bottle it's clear uh, just like a vodka or gin or something. Um, so similar process there. But um, there's actually Pisco, uh, black, black market Pisco, they call it, from, um, you just told Chile. me. Chile. Yeah, Chile. Chile. Chile, that's right. Um, but, They're at war uh, with one another. The, there was kind of a legal battle and Peru won allegedly. So uh, they're the ones that get to officially call it uh, Pisco. So it's kind of like champagne so. where champagne's officially from yeah, a certain exactly. place, but then you can get uh, Prosecco. Or, or Port or um, what's the other? Uh, cognac. Yeah. Uh, they're oh. all from different regions and right. have to be made in a certain way in order to qualify to be yeah. called that. It's kind you of know, similar to grappa. If you've ever had grappa, uh, like no. a grape uh, distilled spirit. I was um, trying to explain to someone the flavor. Now that you say grape, whenever I smell it, that's what I've been smelling. I told someone it, it oh. had notes of like raisins and like a little bit of stuff. my my roommate. My roommate was thinking a like like a dark cherry type of flavor. Yeah, dark cherry raisins. I can Ooh, totally I, smell that. I can smell that. Yeah, for yeah, sure. you can smell hmm. the grape. So raisin. so here in Utah, we really only have about two options when you go to the liquor store or for Pisco. Uh, either this brand that I have called Lagia uh, mm -hmm. or the brand that uh, Will has that has a bottle that looks like the Easter Island statue. Will's got the big or... black bottle. So. <laughs> I had to get the cool looking bottle. So I had an option. But... Yeah. You, you had two options. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, there's only 10. Uh, they, they, one, of, one of the brands that uh, Belinda and I recently learned about. Um, there's only 10 states that they even distribute in right now. Um, so Pisco's, well, it's not new to the United States. It's relatively new when it comes to like mass distribution. It's been popular for several decades in like San Francisco or New York or places like that. But to come to places like Salt Lake, it's a, a relatively new thing. So yeah. do you guys want to take a sip? Let's take a sip. Just well, try gonna, it out. I, I had a Spencer, little taste. I'm good. How did you like it? <laughs> Now that I think about it as distilled wine, it it's changed my perception a little bit. But at first, I was like, "What the fuck is this? This does not taste great." I'm doing a little teeny tiny sip. Ooh, little Actually, teeny tiny. Love it. Peruvians drink it neat, usually out of a, a shot glass. They said. Um, so. But they don't. They don't shoot it. They sip. They just sip it out of a little yeah. glass, um, or a wine glass, um, or they have a like a. A Moscow Mule adjacent cocktail they make. What was the uh, name of that? It was it sounded sort of so good? C, but I can't it's remember. Like now. It's something no. like uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, uh, not the cachaça, but uh, the kaip or whatever. Not here. I'll tell you, <laughs> I have it in does. my Google history. I've had cachaça. That's we could do an episode. Yeah, on that. let's do that uh, for sure. 
Um, no, and it's just like uh, ginger ale and lime juice and this uh, pisco, pisco. and mm. all together. Um, I will tell but, you. And, and um, the woman f from Peru was talking about how that's actually the most popular mm. drink, pop most popular cocktail of Peru. Uh, but the national cocktail is the Pisco Sour. So does the U.S. have a national cocktail then? Budweiser. Bud Light. <laughs> God damn it. Or a I PBR. Know. Damn it. Uh, I right. don't, that's a good question, Will. I don't know. Old fashioned, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking just like like whiskey neat or something. I've, I've actually heard that uh, more tequila is drunk and consumed as a margarita in the u.s than any other place so you could probably even say margarita but moonshine right oh yeah moonshine sure. margaritas man yeah. i love them all right we so should... how do we, how do we make one of these so let's start with our pisco oh. uh let's do two ounces or two parts depending on uh like how heavy your pour is for tonight two right. ounces of pisco or two parts of pisco let, let me give you uh kevin's tip only the tip just the tip um, with Kevin. Just the tip. Um, if you pre-crack your egg, like I did, and then you pour in your alcohol and let it sit for a while, don't look at it before you shake yeah. it. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Also, don't use like the pasteurized egg garbage in the thing. It It'll looks, be nasty. It looks like a cum, uh, cup of cum is, is what you're saying. Ugh, it it does. does. And it's just it. sometimes it just <laughs> is going to smell weird and like... It's yeah, I kept awesome. I kept the egg, egg separate. Nice. Yeah, that was a good call. Yeah, I figured. So we got I, two ounces of pisco. Okay, and then we are gonna do um, an ounce of. They use limon in Peru, which is kind of like a key lime sort of. Um, but you can use lemon, or you can use lime, or you can mix the both, or key limes. Right, that will all work. Yeah. And do you have your your egg in there, Will? I don't. All right, so we got so we got three fourths of an ounce lime, Citrus, two ounces yeah. of pisco, and then mm -hmm. an egg. Uh, an oh, ounce and... of your syrup. Oh, what, Kevin? Uh, an ounce of simple syrup. Yeah. An ounce of simple syrup, and then the egg. Yep. And then your egg white, just the white. Oh. Please, only the white. And do not put the yolk in there. Yeah, if you're using, I mean, if you're cracking an actual egg, it takes a little technique. So we'll show you how to do that. But... Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Okay. Okay. So throw right. your egg white in there, and, and once you got all that in there, shake, right? This is we are doing a dry shake first of all. Yeah. Oh, this is a dry shake. This is a dry shake. So oh, no ice. I thought, in it, your, was, I no thought ice. it was a wet shake. Oh, it will be in a second. Oh, so okay. oh. But we're gonna dry shake first. Okay. Get it right. really aerated. This, that egg in there. This you don't want dry. slimy egg bits in your cocktail for sure. Oh, for it's sure. Just, it's supposed to taste kind of creamy. Don't, kind don't of give like, me this God. visual. Spencer, it's, it, it starts dry, and then after you work it a while, it's wet. Oh, then it gets a little That's wet. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha. All right, so wait till you see this beautiful foam that comes out of here. It should come out frothy and beautiful. So side note, if you don't like eggs, you can use aquafaba, mm -hmm. which is bean juice. But that sounded even more reprehensible to me, so I, I opted not to. Or if, if you really just can't even deal with that, a little is the littlest bit of pineapple juice will actually create a nice foam as well and and is for me always a nice flavor so in peru they use chincho bitters usually but uh this woman on our podcast said that in uh southern peru where the bitters are not so widely available mm -hmm. they sprinkle cinnamon on top so that's what oh, i'm really? gonna do i was gonna give that a do, shot do you know what the chincho bitters are made from no is it bugs <laughs> It's bugs. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. I can't remember what they're called. They're maybe called chuncho. chuncho I've seen bugs. recipes say Agnes more, but... Dora bitters as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Any, any sort of bitters. Too. And so if, what you can do is you can drop little droplets on top and drag a toothpick or a, you know, a cocktail pick through it and design some cute little swirls in it. They make uh. it all cute when you go to the bars. Pink. You can see, uh, well, hers is, yeah, hers is pink because of the raspberry, but mm -hmm. I was going to say it comes out, you know, fairly light in color, True. Um, but has that nice foamy bit on top. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. It, all, it almost tastes like, uh, not like a milkshake, but it's almost like, if you get that good thick foam on it, it's almost like a dessert. It's, it's delicious. Uh. Spencer's, Spencer's uh. really into it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm noticing mine's medium thick. <laughs> I'm just inside joke. Sorry. All oh, girls like yeah. to drink things that are medium. No, thick. I think that's really good. You like that, Will? I do like that. And that's, you can see there, there is there is kind of the mental thing of like. Oh, egg. fuck, there's an egg white in there. A raw egg, yeah. indeed, right? Yeah. If it, if it bugs Not those you hard lot. boiled things. <laughs> Floating on top. <laughs> um, if it bugs you a lot, um, like I said, the the pineapple juice is a nice option too. And it and it tastes the pineapple juice goes along really nicely with the uh, with the sour, so I'll have to try that. I love how time. the foam like slowly floats to the top and it looks just so pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really good. Yeah. There's an aesthetic there. I love it. It's it's almost like orange Julius, like I mean, without yeah. any orange whatsoever. But yeah, yeah, it definitely tastes like that. It, I was never doesn't... an orange Julius guy because of the idea of milk and orange juice. To me, just was just well, like uh. orange orange Juliuses. At least when I was a kid, and my mom would make them, she would put eggs in them. Oh, yeah, oh. I remember that in the blender. Yeah, hmm. so maybe that's why I it tastes like, like that to me. A home ec in middle school, and we put eggs and milk in them. I'm like. Oh. Concerned about so I've made one of these before. I didn't do the dry shake first, and I think it affected how foamy it was for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The the meaning that the now it's foamier than it was mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's way foamier. Do, do you enjoy the that shake. more or not? Um, I don't know. I'm still <laughs> conflicted. It's an interesting drink, right? I'm holding. Uh, I'm holding back my gag. <laughs> no, it tastes good. It's just the mental component. I feel like uh, I drink Pisco a lot for a week or two, and then I forget about right. it. Right. And then. True. Yeah. yeah, I figure I'll have my bottle for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> One of us will probably buy it after it's fixed. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is really good. So I don't know. I don't know if I will like drink this like I drink margaritas, <laughs> but I definitely will have this once in a while. It's an option, right? Yeah, it's a fun option. Another thing, and you can try that other like Moscow Mule type one, right? Yeah. Give that a shot and see what you think of that. There are other things uh, they make with it too. And, so. and that's true, Spencer. You might like it better with that Moscow Mule option. Just drink it with some yeah, I think I'm ginger try, beer. And... I'm going to try the pineapple juice as well and see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it I does. It, it's sweet enough that I think if I added the pineapple, it, it wouldn't taste that different. Yeah, uh, I think I, it, it kind of tastes like a pineapple type of drink. Like I could oh. totally see how pineapple would taste really good. Yeah, with this. it would go with yeah. it. And they use it a lot in tiki drinks. So if Belinda and I seem like we're dragging ass a bit today, everyone, we we just drove from Phoenix up. Like I got home literally a few minutes ago. So uh, <laughs> been driving all day, but uh we actually had a great a great time. We learned a little bit about Pisco on from somebody else's podcast, um, and we listened to several other podcasts. True. But uh, we uh, went it, to a, a restaurant though for lunch today. Oh, that's true. That was wonderful, and I kind of want to give a shout out, shout out to Connor, right? Like Connor, our bartender at the Cornish Pasty Company in Las Vegas, was wonderful. He was such a sweetheart. And uh, he, what was the name of the alcohol he gave us? That uh, Patagonian uh, crab apple liqueur. The the official drink of Patagonia. Um, yeah, it's it's made out of crab apples and pears, maybe. Pear or? and fennel. And fennel. Oh, yeah. so, so unique. Okay. It was really interesting. And yeah. to be clear, I was driving, so I didn't drink. No, it, yeah. it was Belinda's bartender, yeah. but um, <laughs> I did I did take one little sip of that yeah. uh, Patagonian liquor because I'd heard about it before and and wanted to try it. But uh, yeah, shout out to Connor and always a shout out to any Cornish pasty right. anywhere. One of mm -hmm. my all time favorite lunches. So so yeah. good, so so good. What is you know what a pasty, pasty is? No, it's like a so miners <laughs> they used to make them in. Uh, parts of the UK, miners would take them, but it's basically a hot pocket. It's like a hand pie that they would make. So they would make them and they would make one half of the, so it'd be like a, a round or. Yeah, it's like a big half, old. Yeah. Uh, like hand pie. Um, and half of it would be filled with savory stuff and half was sweet. So the, the miners could just wrap it up and take it down into the mine with them and then have it for, for lunch later. But uh 
Yeah, no, they're they're wonderful. We've we've made them several times before. Yeah, they're so good. And, uh, they're always a favorite. It's almost like the one I had was a Guinness. I think they called it Guinness, Guinness stew. stew. It was so um, good. So it was filled with, you know, um, uh, beef that had been braised in Guinness beer and carrots and celery and all that good shit. Oh, and leeks, some mm-hmm. leeks. It, it was delicious. Yeah. Was and you guys are making me hungry. Yeah, I know. Mine was a salmon and asparagus and i don't even know what else but it was just unreal and they had this like dill creamy dip i don't know what it was but it was just unreal and then we like ate it on the way home (laughs) are you one of those people whose pee smells funny i know it doesn't Uh, always i mean i mean if you no if you eat asparagus oh yeah for some people it's not a thing but for other people it is i haven't smelled my pee oh really you've noticed it no no it's 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 always a thing if it happens to you, it's strong. You well, you don't back not up the truck. notice it. It's Kevin, asparagus. Are you saying you've noticed it in Belinda, or are you just saying you've noticed it? Period. I, I, I've I noticed it in me. Oh. Not okay. In her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had to clarify. Oh, I don't. I'm... I don't sniff Belinda's pee. No. <laughs> okay. Um, also, not just asparagus, but sugar smacks, the breakfast cereal. Oh also yeah. Make beer and smell. Yep. Yeah. Welcome really? to piss talk. Um. Welcome to Piss well, Talk. <laughs> Pisco is the our dream. Pisco. Pisco is our talk, yeah. So today it's Piss and Pisco. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Spencer did tell me before the episode started that Pisco's made out of, what was it, Llama Piss? Llama, Llama Piss, piss. Yeah. Yeah. And he, like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I really thought, totally believed it. Didn't even I mean, lie. there's like monkey shit coffee, right? Like, so why oh, no, not? No, it's uh, cat shit. Yeah, yeah. Seven what cats. is it? Cat shit. Yeah. So it's oh yeah, it's a type of cat. coffee beans. Yeah. Of oh, is it? Actually, oh my god, I'm one of those people. Go for it. God well, damn it. Well, actually, actually, actually. No, <laughs> we're cutting me saying that. I was, I was actually talking about that this week with my roommate, and I, I actually like looked it up, and it's actually not a cat. It's like some sort of like, like a lemur or something. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's like a, a little like, like raccoon type creature that like plays in the trees like yeah. best i can describe it by the way i fucking hate raccoons god they creep me out more than any other animal just they're about. so cute they have oh thumbs and they like do oh, stuff they right? do so have cute. opposable they're, thumbs I've they're too wondered. human-like they're too oh. like i don't i don't like it i do have I a backyard like raccoon my neighbor has offered to trap it for me but i'm like <laughs> okay once we trap it what do we do you can't kill a raccoon you're not supposed to so what am i going to do with it yeah you can make a hat. <laughs> oh, we'll that figure includes it out. killing we'll it, it though, out, Kevin. It's going to be an adventure. Oh, they don't shed their skin? Unless it will scratch his head a lot if he wears it live. <laughs> the next, no, the next they, time. They, I will warn you, they can't. They can be mean. Next Not time like I'm on, awesome I'll have a mean, but... head. Yes. Oh, oh God, God, that would be amazing. <laughs> Actually, I, I will give you all a heads up right now. Next episode, um, I have a special gift from my trip out of town uh, for Spencer and Will. It will be delivered to them, but it will be wrapped, and they oh. will have to, to unwrap it on, on the camera. Show. Okay. On camera. Yeah. I love oh, this. Kevin, tell about that liquor store we visited. Gary's oh my drive-thru God. liquor. Shout out to Gary. Well, his name wasn't Gary. His name was, <laughs> uh, what was it, Timmy or Tommy? I have his business card, uh, but I don't know how it is. Yeah, I do too. Anyway, um, so my boss at work is like, oh my God, when you go down to where you're going i probably shouldn't say online um but go to gary's drive-in liquor store and Ooh. she's like you don't worry you can go in but it's drive through you can drive through and buy all your shit so oh, nice. so i noticed it's by the airport and i had to go drop my niece off at the airport so i was like sweet i'll just go you know uh check Swing out gary's by, yeah so we go in there and it's like it's like what is it like i don't know there's like From bars the outside, on the windows it's yeah, like, kind like of this part of town that's a little you know sketch right like you wouldn't usually hang out around there like it's industrial kind of you know run down a, a little tired a little grungy a tired part of town i mean it tired is a good description you know there's nothing yeah. wrong with it no like, no everyone was lovely that i met yeah, there but they were uh awesome. but uh so we walk in and the first thing I see is a fucking shelf Doritos. Full of Doritos. I'm like, 
what the hell is this and it's small it's not huge it's like it's as big as like a small convenience store right like yeah a gas station. like like a small like one of those old nasty mavericks uh <laughs> Like the so small I, ones before they made them nice, you know. Think uh, like no I'm offense to Maverick, we I'm love trying you. Trying to man. adventures for stuff. I'm trying to imagine. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine this establishment. So, is there a like the big redwood trees? Is there a pathway carved through the store, and you drive your car in? Oh, I didn't even see the like, drive-through oh, part. No, it goes around like, back, around like a Taco Bell or okay. something. Oh, yeah. okay. No, but that would that'd be so window. cool. Like, like it's like some right? sort of like car wash. Yeah. But like the walls are just like liquor. liquor. Oh, yes. and you point. You point there used just... to be a drive through grocery store in Bountiful that you would like just straight through drive through and they would like, you'd buy milk and eggs and bread and whatever, like that cookies, sounds brilliant. anything. It was how, how are we a year into COVID and this hasn't that happened? That hasn't been. Right. Uh, what yeah. the fuck? Uh, don't even get me started on drive through drinks because we need to go drinks but no. that's another episode too right but, but you walk into gary's liquor you see the doritos and the ho-hos and all that and, bullshit right as you walk in the door it's like straight in front of you and then you turn to your right and there's like you know seltzers and beers and, and wine by coolers. the way it's so small and crowded it's only wide enough for literally one person barely to walk down an aisle there's no carts there's no hand baskets there's no nothing it's it, that's it so yeah. i walk and it's all snacks on this aisle and i look back and i'm like well there's it looks like there's some beer in the cooler at the end of the aisle yeah some little seltzers there. and ciders it's, and things Thanks and it's fun things yeah i got i got a like a a, a ring pour tangere gin and tonic a can of it it's already pre-made and whatever um and it's like it's like 20 percent alcohol or something like that so i'm i'm jazzed to try those but <laughs> Anyway, my, my boss was like, oh, my God, we saw the most amazing whiskey selection. And they had, like, shit stuff all the way up. I don't know why I was worried about saying shit. Shit all the way up. I've, I've, been, with, <laughs> I've been with my Kevin. nieces. I've been with my nieces. And I'm, yeah, I'm trying to be careful. Um, but uh, anyway, so we're walking through. And it's a lot of, like, uh, interesting but not super exciting wines and beers and and it's small and it's so we get to the front and you know how when you go to a liquor store not here like there'll be the the register and with covid there's like the plexiglass and then there'll be a wall kind of behind the register of with covid and if it's various sketchy, liquors you'll get so i'm looking and i'm he can see i'm kind of like god it just looks like fucking regular jack daniels bullet like the regular shit and he's like uh my friend, you look like you're looking for some bourbon. I'm like, <laughs> how do you fucking know that? Um, and he's like, look up, look up. You literally look, look up and the rafter beams are all full of whiskey and wonderful uh, gins and amazing shit. Like it's amazing. And, like, and like the, I think the most expensive stuff. thing I saw was about a $1,500 bottle of tequila. Jesus. What? Yeah. I, I got some, some Weller um, bourbon, which was cost me a few dollars. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was uh, uh, my, my, my boss when she was down there before, um, not at that store, but a very similar store actually got some Pappy Van Winkle um, from no a, like a, a bullshit little drive through liquor store. Uh, but she said they were out until the next round. So anyway, mm. uh, but it was fun. It was, I spent more than I should have, but that's where I got the special surprise for you guys too. So okay. get really, really no, excited. Cause uh, we saw this and we were like, oh my goodness, what are we looking at? We have to have these, you know? And they're like, oh, they're a shot of some sort, okay? And so they were like, oh, they're $5 a shot. And it was like a whole barrel of these. And he's like, but I'll give you a good deal on the whole barrel. And we're like, oh, okay. Like, so we said, oh, Tim, <laughs> Timmy, so Timmy or Tommy or I were good buddies by the end. He gave me a lot of free shit, actually. We got because, some gifts with purchase. I, I spent some money there, but uh, yeah. Um, no, I have photos. I, we can post the photos. It's, like, it's pretty great because like uh, all the interesting things they had just up in the ceiling for heaven's sakes, like, and they had to get a ladder out, like an he old literally ladder, pulled a ladder, and they out, climbed man. up into the ceiling and pulled wow. the things down. God forbid and... they have an earthquake, man. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I think maybe part of it too is for safety, so people can't just walk out. It's 
it's probably a part of town where maybe occasionally, you know, people burglarize. <laughs> yeah. Can I people um, and those... happy? Yeah. So but it's also I... part of time that you wouldn't think people are looking for those types of alcohols, right? Like, and so you go in and all the things that people would probably normally choose are you at eye level. You expect and then a lot of PBR. Like, yeah. yeah. Everything else is up in the I've, ceiling. I've noticed it's amazing. that with the liquor stores here, depending on where you shop, certain things are in the glass cases and certain things aren't. It's so weird how and they then, do it in, in Utah. In my area and holiday, they'll put expensive shit out, no problem. But you go to like Sandy, a couple other places, and you feel like you're a criminal trying to, you know, buy some illicit thing. Like it's weird. <laughs> Have you noticed and, that? And then they'll have a thirty nine ninety nine bottle in the lock case. Yeah, I don't fucking <laughs> understand it. It's Seriously, so it's true. Yeah. Yep. But at yeah, my store, true. you've got you know the whistle pig, you know ninety nine yeah. dollar dollar bottle just chilling, no problem. That's a rye, by the way, just chilling. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I went to a. I wanted to try because I've been I've been really liking just making some old fashions lately. Um, I, I noticed nice. your four. I noticed your bottle behind you was a little bit lower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. That that bottle, the four roses. Yeah. That that's like dead. That's like. Oh. Dead. Oh. Um, no, no. So so I got. Um, I I don't even know. Like it was just like a more expensive uh, high west. It was like their rendezvous rye oh, or that's something. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and uh like it's just like it's it was just sitting there it was like a 65 dollar bottle or something but let me tell you the old fashions with it are fucking amazing i mean yeah. old fashions with expensive alcohol are always good oh, for yeah. sure. i i, the, I the cringe first... i cringe a little bit like oh <laughs> true the, the first one i had i i actually thought like because the the sugar that i've been using for my old fashions is just maple syrup so the first one I made, I was like, oh, god damn it. I used too much maple syrup. It tastes yeah, like just add more whiskey. whiskey. <laughs> it tasted too sweet. Yeah. But it was actually the whiskey, like the whiskey itself. Like, oh, yeah. Kind yeah, of like, yeah. A, like a Even sweet. for a rye, that's interesting. That it would be that sweet. Well, it's okay. It wasn't that it was like, like sweet. It was more that it was like less of the really like strong whiskey. Astringent Harsh, yeah, flavor. flavor. Yeah, it was. It had a lot more, uh, I don't know, character to it. If if that's a proper, yeah, absolutely, way of describing it. So so I've got one more. Uh, just a tip with Kevin here. <laughs> just um, a tip. <laughs> the beautiful thing is when your foam is left over, but there's no more drinky bits in there. Yeah, you just take the bottle and pour a little more. No, I'm I'm good, man. Right in, and then I'll... you're good to go. I'm Another good. pisco sour like that. Wow. What? <laughs> Here we go. A another tip is if you're requiring more uh, intoxication, you can pour some tequila and you can just shoot it. That's true. Oh, that's true, Ooh. too. Cheers to that. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll give in. I'll give in. I'll have a little bit more Pisco. Oh, fuck that strong. Ah, I'm just going to pour a lot strong. of things into my glass and hope it works out. No, at that little place, um, there were a lot of like, so I'm not a big vodka drinker. Uh, I don't care for vodka. Oh, yeah. really. oh that like, totally it's, works. It's just, it's vodka. just like a lot. It's like vodka, air. I don't know. Vodka exists to make other drinks alcoholic. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I know I don't believe that, but like for the most part, like especially vodkas that you get in here in Utah are not like, they don't have like flavor notes and bullshit unless they're like a flavor. They're like, oh, birthday cake vodka. Oh, like, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, I've never bought a birthday cake vodka, but I don't feel like you want your vodka to really even have flavor. Ugh. No. When I very first started drinking, I remember going to the liquor store and being like, oh, I don't know if I want to drink something so strong. And I remember seeing a raspberry vodka and I picked Ugh. it up. It tasted just like cough syrup. It was so yeah. vomitrocious. I can't even begin. I, like I couldn't finish it. Like Ugh. most things you're like, oh, if I had enough juice or whatnot, it'll be Ugh. like palatable. Nope. I just yeah. had to throw that thing away. It was so bad. Um, but yeah, they had these little vodkas. They were like little absolute. I want to have a bottle somewhere. Um, absolute like they were, juice. They were like called absolute juice. <laughs> what? And they had like an apple right one now. and a strawberry one and one that was like elder, elderflower and pear. Okay. And so I bought like just mini bottles because it's like, oh, maybe if they're good, I'll buy another, like a bigger bottle or whatever. 
Um, we never ended up going back. This was at that Gary's uh, drive through. Um, and he like gave me all these, I unwrapped, he gave me, he's like, oh, here, uh, here's a gift. Cause he gave us you know, little gifts with purchase, like free things that he gave. And he like handed me this little paper sack and I was like, oh, okay. And I opened it and it was little uh, shot glasses with the fireball devil on them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I don't drink fireball, but they were shot glasses. I'll pass them along to somebody and give them hey, yeah. one of these Man, days, so many, so. so many episode ideas from this discussion. Right. Fire, like fireball great. tales and you know my first vodka this could be <laughs> we're kind of going long on the alcohol I will, yeah, yeah i will say really quickly i yeah. mostly agreed about the vodka thing until yeah. i was in london fall of 2019 and it was london cocktail week it just happened yep. to coincide with the trip there yeah. and um uh e brad so at, at a bar where Kettle One was doing, uh, teaching us to make uh, espresso espresso martinis. and uh, But they had us first try a bunch of their vodkas and just the standard um, Kettle Regular One vodka vibe, yeah. um, has really, they had us taste it. And I'd mostly only had a handful of, you know, kind of the standard vodkas. And it's like, yeah, it tastes like, like alcohol. alcohol. Like it, <laughs> you might as well be rubbing alcohol, you know? Um, but this actually has really interesting tasting notes. Like a peppery, um, like orange, peppercorn, yeah. and orange. Citrus, and, yeah. Uh, interesting. But, I, haven't, I haven't tried that one. I've had Stoli's. It's Stoli a little, a little I've, more expensive. You I've know, had Stoli's. Um, yeah. And then I've had, uh, you know, Tito's is kind of the go-to. Just because it's, it's so clean. Um, there's an Icelandic vodka that I like now. The Reykjavik yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that vodka. one's pretty good um i'm trying to think of the other one. Oh, and then i just tr i just picked up a uh japanese vodka Ooh. um so it's by the company that does that roku gin uh hmm, interesting okay forget. oh suntory it's a suntory vodka it's called mm. haku um but it's it's pretty good it's it's just smooth you For know sure. um so i'll have to try that kettle one kevin and see yeah the other i one. like no, the I... monoplova uh vodka is I mean, very cheap. very paddle no it's actually really good like uh, we went to like a bar, like it's weird old bar. And the woman working there was this Russian woman. And she's like, this is That's good right. vodka. Yeah. And uh, we were like, it is. And she's like, and she's like, and let's have picklebacks. And like, she like made her, she had like her own homemade pickles, the whole bit. Like she was. She amazing. brings out this big jar of pickles that she made herself. <laughs> wow. And, by the way, it was an Irish bar in downtown Salt Lake. That is that true. I, I don't think it exists anymore after COVID. Uh, that's too bad. It was called the Republican. Republican, if you're still there, shout out to you. Total dive bar, but we love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, those were the best damn picklebacks I ever mm -hmm. had. I'm not going to lie. I've never yeah, had a pickleback. Yeah, oh, what the heck is that pickleback? needs to be an episode. Oh, she. Uh, I've got a history of introducing people to picklebacks. So <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, save, pickleback. we'll save it for another episode. For sure. It's right, basically right. just doing a, a, a shot. Generally, it's whiskey, but that day it was it was vodka. Vodka. Um, Off of a pickle? No, no, no. No, you do a shot <laughs> of the whiskey, and then you do a shot of pickle juice. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. No, it's so good, dude. Oh. I'm telling you. I, I mean, I'll, say, I'll, I'll try anything yeah. else, so... I just introduced some people to it this weekend sure. or wh whenever it was. And uh, they were, they were the same way. They were like, fuck no, I'm Ugh. not taking that. And then they were like, oh, that's really good. That's really Ricky, good. Ricky got a kick out of the pickle bags for sure. That's true. Ricky Brian, with the pickle. Man. No, the, Ricky. the first, so oh, like, Ricky, that's right. I, so like when I first started drinking, like all I could get because um, I may or may not have been underage was just like <laughs> the shittiest alcohol like like the vodka i drank for like Ever years clear. was like just pop off or whatever however you pronounce it like the like the gallon of in like just like the bottle, one you get for like 7.99 it's like on the bottom like yes, the gold jug yeah, yeah. Well, and so <laughs> and so like the first vodka that i had that wasn't just like rubbing alcohol was um uh, it was high west's uh vodka like the high west has a vodka yeah, yeah silver like, it's, 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 that's that's a whiskey though that's not no, the vodka. silver oats the, no they have a vodka it, too it's it's called like the like 7500 or something oh that's right that's right that's uh, right but but it but it is like a oat vodka and i just remember thinking like oh my god this like when you drink it enough the oat like the oatiness behind it oat o-a-t um 
it kind of tasted vanilla, like mm -hmm. like like a vanilla type of flavor. So oh like ever ever since I've had that, I've I've had a little bit more respect for vodka, even though I just like buy Sky. Like I just I I normally just oh, yeah. Sky Sky's, is my go-to. Sky yeah. is completely non-objectionable. No, nope. yeah. yeah, it's it's neither good nor bad. It's just vodka. It's just Sky. It's just there. <laughs> As our bartender friend Ross would say, it's inoffensive. So there inoffensive, like... <laughs> exactly. There you go. And if uh, Sky, if you want to use my tagline. It's just vodka. Just feel free, contact me. It's just vodka. It's just vodka. It's just vodka. Nothing special. Just vodka. Uh, no, the no. Kettlewind thing, like at London Cocktail Week, was interesting because when they had us make espresso martinis, they were done by the daughter of the guy who invented the espresso martini, and they used an a citrus liqueur, an orange liqueur, Ooh. when they made it, which was actually kind of a surprising uh, yeah, one idea. Of, one of the most interesting good. cocktails I had was a hot chocolate in San Francisco mm. as part of brunch, and it had chartreuse, yellow chartreuse. Oh, oh. it was oh, so damn my. good! That and they had like, really good. It okay, you need to tell us where this place with is. With a toasted marshmallow on top, <laughs> it was so fucking good. Those so, fucking monks. And you could so get I, I, you could get a three ounce version or the two ounce. It was awesome. Ooh. Or both. Or both. <laughs> um, so I, I tweeted this out on the Thirst Impressions uh, or Thirst Pod Twitter account. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the first the first margarita we made, like the Tommy mar margarita. Yeah. It's super good. But I'll tell you what. Tell maybe this is like the standard margarita recipe. It probably is. But um, you put in a, like a half ounce. You do the same recipe. But you do a half ounce of like orange liqueur. Oof, it is good as shit. So fucking good. <laughs> so good. It's like a hybrid, right? I, it's I, I've never tried that. I feel Super like a good. I feel like a teacher who has a student who's really learned his multiplication <laughs> tables. Like you fucking got the nines even, Will. Good job. Yeah. The no, sevens. I love it. Wait, what does that mean? The nines. Oh, that was always the, the hardest are easier. one for me. Oh, oh no. Sevens. I, we didn't know that shit back when I was doing multiplication tables. Oh, the, the finger thing? Reverse the thing. I don't oh, know that shit. Thing, I don't even know yeah. what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> oh, so like when you're common, doing multiplication. Weren't you a math major? Fuck. I was, but I memorized everything. Ask me well, anything. Yeah, that, that's how you. I did oh, it. That's how I did it. Yeah. I didn't. I still don't know my times tables. Like, 12 to nines. I, I know the twos and the fives. 12 and times the tens nine, Belinda. And the elevens. <laughs> And the but the nines you like say like will. <laughs> you say like nine times four and you could do like one two three four wait wait one what you one two three four <laughs> and it's like thirty six. So for our listeners, Belinda's go. holding her fingers up and using a finger trick to do her. <laughs> so I'm doing a finger trick. Oh Christ, this sounds so bad. She's doing a fingering <laughs> trick. Doing a fingering trick for so, math. So, uh, <laughs> So I, I didn't know that you, you, did you major in math, Spencer? Yeah, I did. Um, wow. I did not, yeah, I didn't I studied, know that. I studied for a little bit, got into linear algebra, and then I was like, peace out. This is not for me. Yeah, I started, a, I started shit, a, yeah. before I dropped out, I was trying to minor in math. It's, it gets crazy, man. I like, love yeah, it. Linear algebra fun. is like, <sighs> you know, I'm a, I'm a designer now, but I feel like math and design are not that different in the sense that they're. No. Leveraging creativity, you have tools, and you use these tools in in different ways to come to a solution. So it, yeah. it's not that yeah. different. I loved it though. Right. Yeah. Math when when people math. say that like you should be good at math if you want to get into computer science, it's complete bullshit. You have to be good at Google to really? get into yeah. computer yeah. science. <laughs> you have to be. <laughs> there are. I, I'm not minimizing you, Will. There I, are like a total of zero times that I've had to do like complex math in computers. Like in all of my like half a decade of my career in programming, never once have I had to like come up with like my own equation or like, it's basically like, oh, I need to like figure out the di distance between these two points. Google, how to find the distance between two lat longs. Boom. That's or all. Trains you. moving toward one another. Like you didn't have to figure There's, out like the speed at which they were yeah. traveling. And what, if, what, if they were has, crash. what if Mary has three bottles in her basket? But Timmy has seven. What if you have a car full of watermelons and 
I could do that math <laughs> there's, there's, after my trips to the liquor store, yeah. There is always a question and an answer on Stack Overflow that you can it's find. It's true. Indeed. If you have any, like, if two trains are coming together, I'm sure that exact question is on Stack Overflow. So it's does true. math does math help you more precisely bomb a country, though? That's the question. Oh yeah. Well, okay. when you, when you, you know, yeah. Do you know hard who would segue, know that? Hard segue. Do you know yes. who would know that? Every president of the oh United Every president. I was, how, how are you guys doing? I was super disappointed. I mean, yeah. on the one hand, you know, it, and it, it's been an interesting week with CPAC, which is the conservative political action something, right? I think that's what No, it actually, it, conservative yeah, political it, assholes, I think. What does it stand for? I, I can't believe I just said actually. No, no. Actually. Uh, CPAC. Well, actually. <laughs> CPAC is actually. Oh my God. That'll be Will's CPAC. bit. Actually. <laughs> no, no, I will not be that guy. No, you have no. to have the C finger though. CPAC, uh, it, it's a little bit uh, de like devious, of course, because it's by conservatives, but also because it's not an actual PAC. It's actually like the, the conservative party something. Uh, uh, it's not a committee. It's like conference. Like Convention, it's a conference. conference. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Political, or wait, wait. How does conservative. It go? Conservative Political Asshole Conference. Yes. Ah, perfect. Yes. Perfect. Like the no. Department of Alcohol or Assholes, Bastards, and Cunts that we introduced. Yes. To. Exactly. But it, it's been an interesting week because CPAC happened. At least they had some conference and all the crazies came out of the woodwork. There was a golden yeah. statue of Trump that was rolled out. Yeah, what we was the point oh, of that? Nas the national Jesus anthem fuck. sung in the key of Q. That was interesting. <laughs> Oh, then. Oh, so <laughs> you guys like, can look it, it up. It started out okay, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, that shit went so fast. We can, Off the rails. It made Fergie's national anthem it's performance true. at the NBA look fantastic. Yeah, I will totally. make sure we put a link in the description for you guys to check that out. Um, and then, yeah, President Biden bombed Syria, um, as far oh, as yeah. I'm aware. And I, I wasn't does. super into it, but I was disappointed. You know, I think... Many people are hopeful that this was a turn for something different, right. but we're kind of no. I think shit again. I I've been really uh, I'm not. I haven't been surprised. Not no. the, uh, what I'm about to say, but I. So I haven't been surprised, but it has been really disappointing to see uh, like online liberals who were like the hashtag resistance crowd, who were like the ones that were constantly like. Oh, Trump is trying to get us in a war. Trump is putting kids in cages. Like Trump is a sexual predator. And then Biden comes in and they completely ignore the same sort of issues, like, mm -hmm. like bombing Syria. And like a lot of them were like, see, this is how military action is done. You don't tweet about it. You just do it. No. How about we just don't? How about we just don't do it? How about we have some sort of diplomacy? Yeah. Um, that That's for like the bombing, but like, like other things like uh uh like biden opening up uh what are, what are they calling it like ch like child overflow migrant centers right, right in it's, texas yeah it's the same thing it's the same kids in cages mm -hmm. that all of us were angry about and like i'm i am not in like i am in no way saying that like the country would be better with trump nobody's saying that like all I'm saying is I wish people would be a little bit more consistent in their criticisms of a president, regardless of party. It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be about like, oh, well, Trump was really bad because he's a Republican. But when Biden does it, I'm sure there's a reason. There's not. Well, there is a reason. And it's always a bad reason. We, we don't need to be keeping kids in cages. They, they can live with family. They can live with like- a How home. about they're not they're separated from their family. parents in the first place? So Shocking, I think, right? so I'm not sure if, I, I'm sure that Biden got rid of the child separation policy. Right. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's children being separated. I, this is something I'm just ignorant on. I'm not sure if it's children being separated or if it's unaccompanied minors. So it's unaccompanied either, minors. So that but, that but was either changed. Way, either way, we like, we don't need to be putting them in detention centers. Why, why don't we get them like a, like a fucking hotel room and just make sure that they check in? Like, when when Obama was president, I know like this is where a lot of like conservatives will be like, oh well, when were the cages built? They were built by Obama. 
because Obama was doing the same bad, the same yeah. sort of bad things. He yeah. was. But what Obama did do was when migrants were seeking asylum, he didn't put them in prison or detention centers. He he gave them a court date or like the system, they gave them a court date and some insanely high rate, like 95% of uh, immigrants showed up to the court like yeah. when when they were supposed to because these people that are coming to america they want to be here they want to be here they want to be here legitimately they're not like trying to skirt the system yeah yeah and and, and for, further furthermore like even when conservatives are saying like like the immigrants are i don't know they're 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 taking more than they give that's just false the, the immigrants are giving the immigrants are giving more to our country than most Americans. Agreed. Agreed. And uh, they don't qualify for a lot of public assistance. Like, just yeah. don't. And they're working their asses off. Like, it's a lot of times, these conservative. I, uh, just, just, just this last point. A lot of times, what what happens is, like, they'll have to go through like the e-verify type of system where they have to like check a social security number and make sure it's real. So a lot of times, what migrants will do is they'll they'll get other people's social security numbers. Yeah. And by doing that, they are actually paying taxes right. on their income, right. but they are not they are not allowed to actually get the benefits from the taxes that they're paying. So they are giving, they are literally financially, uh, like socially, they are giving more to our country than a lot of people. Yeah. So we so should I, be in cages. I was an immigrant. I came here as a student and I did the whole thing through the system and you you uh, dot your I's, cross your T's, tiptoe, <laughs> look over your shoulder at every turn. Like it, yeah. it's debilitating. It is a weight that rests on you for years and years. Like I, me and, and some friends of mine, family, we still have like trauma from it. Like it's traumatic. It's not easy. And I remember Sorry. getting naturalized. Something exciting going on outside. I don't know. Oh, what no. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting wow. naturalized and they're like, okay, you're a citizen. And it's like, well, I, I can like do whatever I want now. It's weird. It's really fucking yeah. weird. But to your point, Will, I remember paying taxes. Yeah. And yeah, I paid taxes, but I couldn't vote. Right. I paid yeah. taxes, but I couldn't get any benefits at all. Yeah. Um, but you do it, you know? And so in, Spencer, in terms not of. In terms of hard okay. work, I remember fucking cleaning shit up, man. Like my first janitorial job and I would clean carpets and like clean restaurants and all that stuff because that's what we did and you work hard. And, you know, people often there's there's this refrain. Oh, well, they're taking our jobs. Like, do you want to do that shit? I can, t I can tell you I was willing to do it. I didn't want to, but I knew what I had to do. Right. I knew what I had to do to keep moving forward I, I i remember reading an article where it was like that it was some sort of like um like some sort of i don't know i don't know what like part of science this would be like some sort of like socioeconomic study that they were doing and they were trying to see what it would take for uh like americans to take uh like farm labor type of jobs <laughs> and so they put out like job postings where like they're like we give you full benefits we give you really good health insurance vision dental like all the works 401k matching we're gonna pay you 20 30 bucks an hour like they made it a really good deal and a single american took it on holy and shit he, are you serious then he quit the next day Hmm. like very interesting it's it, it really it really is like we we do we just don't treat our immigrants right that they they are the it's not even they like immigrants are choosing our country like americans aren't choosing america we just happen to be born here so isn't it a good thing if somebody chooses america shouldn't we want people who choose america to be their country those are the people that we should want in our country. And also to, it's, it's the same sort of idea in my head about like, uh, like conservatives and abortion, where like if they're so concerned about abortion, then why aren't they taking 
actual measures to reduce abortions like, like better sex education like better sex education yep so Access if, to contraceptives things like that exactly so if no sex, sex doesn't exist but if it happens you cannot Make it yes, no, it, it, I, I don't, it only I don't exists to, in marriage. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to jump on that right. tangent right now. Maybe we can in, in a minute, because <laughs> um, that that could go a while. But what, like, in my head, it's the same sort of logic around immigration, where conservatives are always saying like, "There's too many immigrants coming, and they're taking our jobs." Okay, then why don't we set up a system that allows people to get citizenship easier? So that we can, yeah. like, if you're so concerned about uh, about undocumented people taking jobs, then let's make them documented. Like, yeah. let's give them documents and let them Here's the work problem. here legally. Here's the problem. And I only have secondhand experience with immigration. Spencer has firsthand experience with immigration. Um, in my experience with it was my uncle, uh, my aunt married a man who was from Mexico. Um, and his past was spotty. He actually worked as a coyote, bringing people across the border, like swimming the fucking river, like like legitimately. Um, and um, my dad was his sponsor to get into the United States and have a green card and all this stuff. Um, and he spoke English very well, uh, but there are so many predatory businesses, attorneys, whatever, that want to quote air quote help you you know become a citizen right and they like it costs tens of thousands of dollars possibly like for them to represent you in these hearings or like you know file paperwork or whatnot like it seemed like it was like this never-ending thing that just went on and on and on and on and on for my uncle um and he was this awesome awesome guy loved him loved him um and uh it just seemed like they set the system up for um, people uh, of color that can't speak English very well to fail. They can't, they can't get through the system enough to like become a naturalized citizen. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know well, if that's the thing or if it's, you know, I don't know. Spencer, tell me what your experience is. There are very subtle things that they do. Um, and it, it got a lot worse during the Trump administration. I remember- Really? When President Trump was elected, uh, friends and family we were like, "Shit, we gotta get, <laughs> we gotta get our applications in." I took a little bit longer, but I finally got it in. I was like, "I," because there was talk about revoking green cards, and there was talk yeah. about sending people back, and I'm like, "No, you know, I had a green card. I was fine." Anyhow, um, things like y you mentioned, Belinda. And, and it's very subtle because legally speaking, they, they're not supposed to do this, but limiting access to documents in your language, or right. it might be limiting uh, the help that you're able to get in the process, um, making it so complex yeah. that you have to hire an attorney and yeah. for an immigrant to say, hey, I'm going to spend three, five thousand dollars on an attorney for some, that's that's impossible. True. Right. Yeah. Um, so little things like that. And actually in, during the Trump administration, they, there was a change made to the testing where it became politicized a bit. Um, so for example, they changed a question on the, for, for those who don't know, there is an exam or test that you take and you have to get, you have to score 60% or higher, I think, uh, in terms of your responses. So one of the questions was a U.S. Senator represents, and the answers are like, uh, the people in the state, the citizens in the state. Um, so intentionally confusing because conservatives like to assert that, oh, well, non-citizens aren't represented, but the constitution says nothing about <laughs> whether you're a citizen or not. It's the people in oh, your right. state. Right. So there's this, there's this tension. Trick Anyhow, question, so they made yeah. this change and they made the question tricky and it's actually false because yeah, a Senator does not represent just the citizens aka white people mm -hmm. in the state and there there's just a lot of dog whistles man yeah. Um, yeah. in yeah. terms of how you hear language on both sides um and that's not to say democrats are perfect but i certainly feel less uh <laughs> less of the enemy um when it when yeah. it comes to aligning myself with the democrats and to will's point you know about migrants 
coming to the United States and being able to work and contribute to society. I think the prevailing assumption amongst friends, people I know that are conservative, and admittedly, and I hate saying this, but having formerly been conservative in my thinking because yeah. of religion and all that, I would think the same things too. There was this internalized hatred almost that, oh, these people are coming to take our jobs. They are coming to take opportunities. They're coming to take food out of your mouth. It's like, really? No, that's not how it is. Like we, so, yeah. <laughs> we are coming here much like your ancestors did. Um, Right. Less Actually, violence. more legitimately than your yeah, ancestors with, did. With, but, with less you know. violence mm -hmm. and intent yeah. to kill people, um, despite what our former president said. I'm not a rapist. I'm not a murderer. That kind of thing. You know, if anything, I've contributed. You're not a, a lot criminal to... from a shithole country. Yeah, Holy so shit! It's... Like, what the fuck? I guess what I'm getting at is is the the mindset and approach. Like, can we approach this with the the view or or thought that oh. People are well-intentioned. You know, there's almost right. this idea of the other. And I understand that that's a fundamental part of human nature, but right. these people are the other and they're coming oh, yeah. to take away. It's like, no, man, wh what they're, they're so, coming to enrich our culture. You know, so, you talked about margaritas and how much tequila we drink. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> come on, man. Exactly. Like, uh, we were listening to a podcast today and they talked about how many of the laws and rules we have in place now are based on a big immigration thing that happened, I think they said in the 80s, um, tied amnesty? to... Amnesty? No. Yeah, I think, I they, mean, I think yes. the conservatives are like, amnesty, amnesty, but like for the rest of normal people that give a shit, like it was, you know, just a, a good immigration bill like that but, helped but, some people. But I'm talking about the, the laws that are in place now. A lot right. of them were based on, back then, a majority, or uh, according to the statistics, a majority of the people crossing the border illegally were single Mexican males. Um, or single and, single people, right? And of any gender, right? Like They were just like single no, people, no, no, adults. No, they, they, said, they, they said single oh, Mexican really? males. Yeah. And so a lot of this stuff was was set up to that. Um, now, uh, st this is statistically, this isn't based on like guesses. This is mm -hmm. data based on people that they are either deporting or letting come in. Um, it's Central American women and children. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's men. I mean, that's not to say the majority is, yeah. is that. And they said, uh, you know, the laws we have in place and even some of the rules that aren't even politicized or whatever, just are antiquated based on the realities that are faced. And, and the reality is, fuck, if most Americans were to sit down with this woman from El Salvador and her two children who just fucking walked a thousand miles or whatever it is, or rode on the top of trains or buses or whatever, because they couldn't get a ticket to get inside um, to get to the border. And now are living in a tent city because we basically shut down the border uh, under the Trump administration. Um, I, in my opinion, most Americans would hear her story and be like, oh my God, let this poor woman yeah. and her children in. She wants to go work a job that probably the majority of Americans wouldn't want to work right. anyway. She's going to work at a hotel or something. She yeah. wants her like... children to get an education and to get health care and to be safe. And, yeah. and but, I, I, but the reality is we equate them with murderers, Criminals. rapists, whatever, because yeah. of stupid <laughs> fucking well, politics. Well, this is like right? Reagan era, like we're going to get hard on it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, like, there's just, likely. Did you likely, say we're gonna get a hard on? <laughs> we're gonna get a hard on. Get a hard on, guys. Ooh, yeah. Well, fucking welcome Reagan. To, <laughs> welcome to wet. Time. Reagan loved to get hard. So Reagan the, hard on. <laughs> there's likely multiple reasons for, uh, as I perceive it, conservatives' resistance to immigration. One of those is likely xenophobia in the sense that, yeah. again, this this idea of the the other when it comes to our yeah. very human nature. I mean. How many times have <laughs> nice egg Kevin? How many times have you encountered someone and there's this palpable visceral reaction like, oh, okay, this is a different person, and you almost have to you have to function at a higher level to allow yourself to overcome your instinct to be cautious and be suspicious. But conservatives have almost run away with this narrative that 
oh, because these people are different, this is how they are. So that's the one thing. And then the other thing I think is it's coming from a place of fear. Yep. Right. Now, we've talked on the show about censorship and issues related to the conservative platform, as I will put right. it, or Republican platform even. And they're crying foul because they feel they're they're being rejected, censored. And it's like, but well, maybe your ideas are just shit. Like, maybe people oh, yeah. don't like to be racist and they realize that this is not okay. And I, mean, I, I, my, my, my hypothesis anyways, and I don't have any specific data to back this up beyond circumstantial and at least observational sure. evidence is that there is a fear because here's the real, the real, real right now. Mm-hmm. Immigrants do have babies. These babies grow up yep. and typically they vote <laughs> against being racist. Like, yeah. There's some fear. And I'll tell you, when I when I became a citizen, consider this. This is a moment in your life you've some for some people has been twenty years in the making. And here you are, you get sworn in, you do the thing. And the next question is, okay, how do I get a passport? Because I want to go home now. Um and they give you all the instructions. There's a form in your fucking packet that you get with a letter from Donald mm. Trump or whoever the president is. But how do I vote? There's no information. It's just like, oh, you have to go this and, and it's kind of convoluted and weird and they make it hard. And I think it's because yeah. this is again, this is my hypothesis based on my own experience. I think they're afraid that immigrants will be empowered to vote. And yeah, once you leave that courthouse or wherever you are, you might put it off. And then if yeah. you don't register to vote, you don't have a voice. And if they don't have a voice, then white people yeah. have more power. So, so it's fear based. And I if think. the voting materials are not in your language, then you can't vote or you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But here's the idea, like the idea of and, and tr- the Trump administration made this like a bigger deal than it has ever been in the past is the crimigration, right? Like they're drug dealers, they're rapists, yeah. they're like human traffickers, all those things. And yes, some of them are, you know, some of Americans are, some of like Europeans are. They're We're all, all fucking human, it's of course. No one's perfect. To a brown or black person, for Christ's sake. Like, but they like have this idea that, like, oh, if they're coming from Mexico, they're obviously going they to be a criminal. They must be bad. They must um, be bad. They're and gonna... it's this xenophobia. Oh, I was, I was just saying, yeah. I remember when they were, when, so when the Black Lives Matter protests were happening with immigration, even, mm-hmm. there's this idea of them and us. They're coming for your yeah. neighborhoods. And I'm like, what do you mean by they? And what do you mean by right. your right. neighborhoods? Like, and what are you actually trying to say here? Here, here, here? Here's the thing, too, is every single statistic shows that immigrants commit less crime than citizens, yep. than documented yep. people. Yep. Absolutely. Because guess what They're happens? They're fucking careful as shit. Guess what happens if you get in trouble and you're here without documents? Fucking Trump, fucking fucking in jail. Trump and Biden will fucking deport you. So of course they are going to be more cautious about following the law. More Can, immigrants true. follow the law than the average American. Do you true. know what- uh, but Have you heard you the know- thing about how Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Kevin, what were you I was saying? just going to say, do you know what, uh, in the immigration circles of attorneys and lobbyists and all these people, they refer to Obama as the deporter in chief. Yeah. That's a common is, title for him. Do you guys remember the very first Democratic uh, debate this past election cycle? I do. I don't. There, I do. there, was, there was activists that stood up and called Biden out for uh, to try to push him to not do deportations. And so what did Biden do? He actually listened and he made a campaign promise. And he said that he will put a moratorium on deportations for the first hundred days in, of, in his office. And guess what he did it, for it is right now. He just gave us a finger and said, yeah, no, I'm doing deportations. He doesn't give a shit. This, okay. this is where, um, like before before black lives matter was happening um there was a a really amazing jewish activists um like one of the main groups was called uh like never again action and what they were doing was a bunch of these jewish people would go to these child uh 
uh, detention centers. Yeah. And they would literally like link arms in front of the, the driveways of these places so that yeah. they couldn't conduct business. They, they literally shut down these detention centers because of all the horrendous stories. Like when right. AOC went down there, they were having to drink out of the toilet. Yeah. The children were, and the mothers were. And I know, I know conservatives will be like, that's just how the, like, there's a water fountain on top of the toilet. That's how detention centers were. No, what AOC and Rashida Tlaib and the, the people there were saying was that the water fountain on the top was not working. So they had to literally drink from the toilets. Holy and shit. So, and so like these groups, these amazing Jewish activists went out and their main message was, we've seen this before. This was happening to mm-hmm. our people yeah. and we will not allow it to happen again. And just like under Trump, we need to have that same sort of view towards the way that the the oppressors in this country the the elite the way that they are treating the like least fortunate of us sure. the way that they're treating them is the same way that they're going to treat us if they have the chance right here's the thing it's not just liberals politics are back on their bullshit it's a thing yeah. like and you know there are campaign promises throughout history that have been broken right like a chicken in every pot and a car in every driveway or like read my you lips know, no, no, no new pot. taxes whatever like they all say shit. They're all like full of bullshit. Um, the problem is that, um, you know, everybody's looking to Biden to put in, like write up all these uh, executive orders, right? Like they're like, oh, just reverse everything right off the bat. And he literally said anything. He's like, I'm not making any new like laws or anything. I'm just reversing bad policy. The thing is, <laughs> Politicians make promises not only to the people, but to lobbyists and businesses yeah. and big money or all over the world, is, other is countries. It... So you can't earmark an executive order. Okay, this, but this yes, may you sound, can. Yes, this you may can. sound subversive and anarchistic, but I'm like, is America too big? Like, because how, no, how does how does one man like? make everyone happy i don't think this that's is a presidency too big. this is the this presidency is a, too big i don't I, fuck man like okay no this is so this is a, a great example of like something that biden could easily do yeah so he promised to uh cancel ten thousand dollars of student debt so like bernie was all of it uh biden was ten thousand dollars and then you have like chuck schumer and a couple other democratic uh leaders who are pushing for a $50,000 uh, student debt, debt cancellation bill yeah. that they would have to pass. But here's the thing about federally held student debt is it can be discharged via an executive order. It doesn't need to go through Congress. It literally, all it requires is a stroke of a pen. And what Biden is saying is, he. Th- this is this is the point I'm making is, Democrats, it, not just like Republicans also do this, but Democrats are notorious about this. They will put up these artificial roadblocks and they'll be like, there's nothing we can do. So like with Biden, he could he could sign an executive order tomorrow, cancel, he could cancel all federally held student debt if he wanted to, but he promised $10,000. So if we're going to hold him accountable, at least $10,000. Exactly. And he's saying, not going to do that because he needs to set up a committee to research the legality of it, even though lawyers have already researched it. My set, my second thing that I wanted to say was uh, this: the stuff that's going on around fifteen, the fifteen dollar minimum wage. Uh. So they were trying; they, meaning Democratic leadership, uh, spearheaded by Bernie Sanders, were trying to put a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Uh, clause in the reconciliation bill that's going through congress right now right. the house already voted on it and if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure the bill that the house voted on does include the 15 dollars minimum wage oh really but I, I could be i could be wrong about that i thought they struck that out no no so so what happened was and i i could be a little bit wrong about this but mm-hmm. uh ju- the gist of this is 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 right on is in order for something to be in the reconciliation bill the reconciliation bill, they do it once a year. It defines the budget. 
and they can basically put a whole bunch of crap in it. And um, the rule is that it has to affect the budget. So only things that affect the budget can go in the reconciliation bill. And there is a person who determines if something um, affects the budget. They're called the parliamentarian. And um, so the parliamentarian ruled that putting a $15 minimum wage uh, clause in the bill would not affect the budget, even though it would, because that means that every single federal institution would have to start paying their employees $15 minimum wage. Anyways, and so the Biden administration was just like, oh, there's nothing we can do. The parliamentarian ruled on it. There are so many things you can do. The first thing you can do is you can actually change the rules about the reconciliation bill. Guess how many votes that takes to change the rule? All it takes is a simple majority. They could easily, they could easily, next time the Senate is in session, they could easily just amend the rules to allow the $15 minimum wage in it. They, they could actually override the parliament, parliamentarian uh, if they have a simple majority. And Kamala Harris has said that she will not support that route. So this is what I'm saying, where they put up these artificial roadblocks and they say, there's nothing we can do. Even though at the same time, there is a, a person that Biden is trying to get to the OMB office. Her name is Nira Tandon. I fucking hate her. I, I hate her. I've had so many Twitter fights with this lady. Oh, we, we disagree. More. We disagree very strongly on policy. And I'm very vocal about it on Twitter. And it's, it's funny. She's replied to me a few times. Um, and so the progressives and the leftists, like the more lefty people, they don't want Nira Tandon to be an OMB director. And so the, the more conservative side of the Democrats they are fighting tooth and nail to get Nira Tandon in as an OMB director. Like they are going all, like, like they, they are starting to threaten Bernie with not allowing any of his bills to get through. That they are, they are like, they are doing everything they can. So my point is, why don't they do the same thing with $15 minimum wage? Why don't they do the same thing about student debt counselization? They, they're willing to, to do whatever it takes to get some centrist, corporatist person to be an OMB director. But when it comes to working people, they're just like, there's nothing we can do. We just yeah. don't have the votes. We, we control the Senate, the House, and the presidency, but oh, we just, we can't do it. I'm sorry. Our hands are tied. Well, our hands, our are, hands tied. are tied. Here's the yeah. thing. None of us would love nothing, any, you know, we'd be so happy with a bipartisan, like, consensus right for any of these ideas no I, like no. what if we came to an agreement like and we we're like oh, this is great this is a, a way what, forward in, right in what, but the what, right in the what right world does the does the right want to have a 15 dollars minimum wage exactly. which i was gonna i was gonna say to be equin equanimous or whatever um i think there is some concern from small business owners and uh, you know I, I run my own thing and I, I do a lot of what i do independently right 15 dollars an hour is not something that feels threatening to me but i do understand the economics and the fear behind it because it is in our nature to want to preserve as much as we have no i i get sure. that i, I get that but like, walmart resources. and amazon and yeah. a lot of these big businesses can pay 15 but they are hour. pushing for it they're pushing for it and i i not whenever Walmart, I see, whenever I see a big hell against it. Oh, interesting. Amazon's pushing yeah. hard for it, but Amazon and, yeah. and Walmart are competitors. And it, and yeah. so it's been interesting to, to hear ads and PR campaigns and whatever, you know, Walmart's, like you said, pushing yeah. against and Amazon's pushing for it's a bit confusing. I, um, I, because, I think, yeah, Amazon could pay, pay 30 bucks an hour if they wanted. And right, be fine. Right. So I, I just think I, I understand people's concern around small businesses. Here's the thing is it's not going to be that tomorrow it's going to be $15. Exactly. It's going to be exactly. a four to five year ramp up period. And also it's not, this is, this is my opinion of it is it's not just like the actual $15 minimum wage. It is the whole entire idea behind it is it's that if you are running a business, you should not be allowed to exploit your employees. Bingo. If you if you pay them a sub uh, a sub uh, living wage, you do not 
you should not be allowed to hire that person. You can't right. afford them. If you can't afford to pay somebody a living wage, you can't afford them. Exactly. We, we, here in this country, we rely on the exploitation of people's labor for businesses yeah. that have a profit. Yeah. So like that, so that's a little bit harder of a concept for people to actually express. It, it's, but that is like the whole reason for, in my mind, behind the $15 minimum wage. Here's, here's the thing. The American economy, as it stands today, is, as it stood for quite some time now, is one of the predominant, most important economies in the world, right? I think we can all agree on that. It's the baseline. It's built, mm -hmm. it's built from the beginning, before the fucking country was founded, on slave labor. Yeah. Yeah. Literal they still slave rely labor. on that, right? And guess what? Even when the Emancipation Proclamation came, even when all of the Jim Crow was reversed and whatever, we've kept slave labor. We keep it through yeah. the incarceration system in this country. We keep it through the fucking minimum wage that is a completely unliving minimum right. wage at this point. And or undocumented workers, yeah. whatever. Exactly. Like there's so many ways in which people exploit other people to, you know, tipped workers waitresses yeah. and waiters absolutely they yeah. should also be paid minimum wage it is yeah. an atrocity that they that businesses only have to pay them what is like 250 and and then because they get tips so therefore it adds up to greater than minimum wage i, I was just talking to my niece she lives in chicago and she's a waitress and uh during covid during the past year guess how much she makes on average in tips like zero to like ten dollars a shift. Yeah. Ooh. And 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 I don't I can't remember how much they make. It's like two or three bucks an hour or something. Yeah. Um, so it's like <laughs> not only is the minimum wage a non living wage, but how many waiters, waitresses, bus people, whatever do we yeah. have out there who are relying on tips and things like that that in a pandemic Oh, not to mention the fact that Biden fucking won the election and flipped the Senate based on, you know, promising that there'd be some relief from this fucking mm -hmm. pandemic. And that still is, you know, sitting so there. I, I, I say this not to absolve myself of any responsibility, but I'm not an economist, but I feel as though, uh, you know, wages have increased their quality of living has increased. And, wages and, and have by, remained stagnant. Well, what I mean to say, Will, is like people who are trained in a specific skill, like developers, for example, where there is a need for your specific skill or mine. Yeah, but there's a, a need for designer, specific whatever. other skills cool. like gutting but chickens, right? Ten years like, ago, and... I would not have expected to get paid as much as I do now. So I have a tolerance, yeah. I, or at least I can make space for higher cost of goods. I know that's a concern for people. It's like, oh, well, hey, now the guy at McDonald's is flipping burgers is going to be getting paid that much. Okay. Are you ready to pay so, 10 bucks for your Big Mac? And I'm like, yeah, okay. if you, so I'm you okay make, with that. Maybe I'll eat out less. Brilliant, you make a brilliant point, Spencer, because I actually looked this up. So in, in McDonald's in Denmark, I mean, I'm going to get the numbers a little bit wrong. They're, they're just, okay. This is just a general thing. If I'm like, if I'm saying numbers, sure. Keep it close. If you're saying I, numbers to, that are wrong, you're canceled, Will. Round <laughs> I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to keep them relatively to where I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're at. So, so I looked this up. So in Denmark, they actually have a functioning, a functioning social democracy. They're not a socialist country. They're still a capitalist country, but they have a very strong social democracy, kind of like a social safety net. And one of the things that they do is they force businesses to pay their workers a living wage. So in Denmark, if I'm not mistaken, their, their rate of minimum wage um, in US dollars is something like $18 an hour. Here in the US, okay, this is side note, this is not my point. If, mm -hmm. if wages were tied to productivity, then minimum wage right now would be closer to $25. Anyways. Yeah. So in Denmark, the minimum wage is like $18. So I was, I looked up because there's McDonald's in Denmark. So I, I was wondering like, okay, so if they have to pay their employees $18 an hour, how much of an increase did they have to add to like the Big Mac? And it turned out it was like a full 
75 cents. Well, when people talk about how if you raise minimum wage, prices will go up. Guess what? Yeah, they will go up, but at it will be less. They will not go up at this at like in parallel. Like it will not be like, oh, your minimum wage is seven twenty five, and a Big Mac is five bucks. So if we double minimum wage to fifteen bucks, that means that a Big Mac is going to also double. No, that's not how economics works. Prices will increase, but the difference that you will be making is substantial. Sure, things are going to cost a little bit more, but you are going to have more cash on hand in order to purchase those things. Yeah. And not only will you have more cash on hand, but more cash will be in the economy. People will have more cash to stimulate the economy. More small businesses will be able to have more customers and a bigger population of people that can potentially be consumers. This I will stimulate the economy. I think that the... the putting my conservative hat on yeah. here the 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 thought process is something like well we're not going to take money from CEOs and executives so how do you pay your employees more well you got to charge more for goods but are we considering operational efficiency or other things that companies can do yes layoffs might be a part of that i know the cbo has said that you know there's a potential for that but there's an unwillingness to consider, hey, does a CEO need to make 3500 bucks an hour or minute in yeah. the case of Jeff Bezos or yeah. whatever, how much he makes? But it's like, do they need to make that much? You know, can they tolerate? Subsist. So, so let me, let me boil, boil down this argument to a simple meme and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to <laughs> okay. our group chat. Um, I, I saw this on Facebook and it's, it's so true where uh, I, I don't know i forget what like the like the little title was but it was like uh, a person is saying something like oh if you increase a uh, minimum wage then you're gonna have to pay more for pizza and the second image was like oh so you're telling me you care more about pizza than human beings oh, God. That's, that's simply <laughs> that's simply the argument i'm making is if if prices go up it's not going to be substantial it's yeah. not it's going to, if prices do go up and they've actually done a whole lot of studies on minimum wage. Like if you actually look up economic studies on this sort of thing, it is very conclusive that minimum wage will have, if you increase minimum wage, there is a minuscule amount of uh, cost of living increases. Yeah. And guess what? Not... They're pouring money back into the economy because they've got money to spend for heaven's yeah. sakes. Yeah. And I'm like, so glad I'm so glad we got to talk about this because I was going to start talking about open borders and about how our borders should be the same as like like Utah's borders with Nevada and uh Colorado. Like why don't we have that between us and Mexico? And I don't this, see why we can't. And this no, has so been the last the episode. That. I'm just saying that's another topic. Just <laughs> that's another episode. It's, I'm too It's tired. not, but it also is, but here's the thing. Borders are an idea and Absolutely. before borders were the idea as far as like immigration goes you know uh african americans were not allowed a citizenship as you know like as americans right and then um native america and that what what when did african americans get uh citizenship 1868 something like that yeah, guess when native was, americans was... got citizenship in the united states 19 fucking 24 Yes, like this Whoa. is ridiculous. And because the borders are an idea, they're a construct, they're just an idea. Like it's all to keep away. Borders, the... borders are set up by, yeah. borders are set up by the oligarchy. Like, yeah, they, like absolutely. if we, if we actually, there are plenty of workers that like, like literally there are workers that commute into the United States during the day yeah. to work and then commute back home so that they could go back home. Right. Why, why do we have to have this crazy process where they have to have a passport and they have to be, they have to have some sort of crazy different documentation in order to work? Here's why, the thing. Like literally, why can't it be like Utahns going to Nevada? I don't see why, why it's any different. It's not. Here's the thing. Conservatives prey on fears. Yeah. Fears of losing jobs, fears of 
criminal activity, fears AKA of losing people. their money, fears of what, Spencer? Brown people. Brown yeah. people? I Absolutely. Like they prey on these fears. Like they're going to lose, you know, all these privileges, their religious freedom or their, you know, whatever, their guns or the, it's all about fear to the conservatives. And I hate saying, like, I think, like, every episode I say something about, like, conservatives, but, like, but, um, or your dad. Or you, you can hate me. I'm, I'm the crazy <laughs> Antifa leftists. Like, just but seriously, hate me. They well, prey okay, on fears. I and I guess politics in general prey on fears, right? Like, to yeah. get their point across or, you know. I don't know yeah, no, look, like look how Biden won. Like, let's, let's remember mm -hmm. how Biden won. Biden's whole, okay. Let me, let me just. Full disclosure, I am no Biden fan. Um, I no. did like Biden. I always have. So I'm just putting that out there. So anyways, how did Biden win? His whole entire thesis of his campaign was Trump bad. That's that's what it was. Yeah. It was Trump is bad. We need to get him out of here. Yeah. It was true. It like Which was true. It was yeah. bad. That doesn't mean Biden's that much better. Like he's going sure. back on two thousand dollar checks. He promised two thousand dollar checks, and now he's going back on it, and he's gaslighting us and telling us, "No, no, fourteen hundred dollars is actually two thousand dollars if you add the six hundred dollars." This is why people hate Democrats. Stop and doing math, these qualifiers. Just give us our damn money, Biden. Come on. We're we're gonna cut that right there yeah. for a, a clip on. <laughs> Give us some damn money, Biden. And speaking, it goes black all spe right there. Like. Speaking of fear, I'm afraid Kevin might pass out, so I think we should wrap. <laughs> we should. <laughs> I, I, I have one thing to say. All right. Not one thing, but one statement. Right? Like not one word. Oh, you already um, said your word, Kevin. Sorry, we're wrapping. Damn it, you. God Welcome. damn it. <laughs> no um he wishes for about, more wishes <laughs> yeah i was thinking about and this kind of goes along with what belinda was saying in the end all that ma it goes along with what belinda and will were saying in the end all that matters is human beings right yeah like yeah. i mean the other shit yeah, matters Kevin. obviously i love i don't love the raccoons but i love the other <laughs> <laughs> and I love the environment and I love the earth and I love all those things. But, Scorpions even. So yeah. I'm Ice. driving today. I'm driving through fucking Arizona. And, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with Arizona. But I see uh, a bumper sticker. First thing I see is USMC, which I'm used to seeing. My, my dad was a Marine uh, during the Vietnam War and... Uh, lots of love hate relationships there anyway right. um the the bumper sticker i see as i get close is god bless our troops and especially our snipers in the middle east and i was like what the actual fuck yeah, are you that's kidding weird me shit. like so belinda I, I i'm not taking exception with what she said i agree with it completely but it's not just based on fear. And I, I would lump in not just the conservatives. And I know we do bash on the conservatives a lot in here because none of us are conservative, <laughs> to be honest. Some of uh, us in used to be a little way. bit, you know, more oh, conservative uh, uh, than we are now. Three of us used to be. And some yeah. of us are, the, so we're more towards the left-leaning side. But the reality is, yes, fear drives a lot of things yeah. when it comes to politics in America. But so does hate. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and and until we solve some of the issues tied to that, until we solve some of the issues tied to not only racial hate, uh, gender based hate, sexuality based hate, or just hate of fucking everyone. I mean, god damn it! I was on the road for ten plus hours today. Like people drive like assholes out there, and I'm like, why are you driving? like a complete imbecile like yeah. are you trying to kill someone there, there, there's way too much hate out there and i'm not trying to like hold all four of your hands and sing kumbaya why not although, although i would love that to be honest like um but like you, you are God just you it. you are just you kevin yeah i'm just me and just and him. i'm i'm not gonna quote you know there, there's no can't we all just get along i'm, I'm not gonna say that here but but 
I mean, before we even worry about the fear, and maybe the fear and the hate go hand in hand, but like uh, Republicans, Democrats, were all living in this this fear and hate based thing. Whether it's hate of conservatives, hate of people of color, hate of homosexuals, hate of whomever it may be. Different religions, right? Like We've got to yeah. take steps in this country to solve that hatred and yeah. fear before we can even start thinking about worrying about, I mean, yes, I agree. We should raise the, the minimum wage right now. And, and poverty, poverty issues are real issues. And there is hate, hatred towards people of a lower income level. That's a real thing out there too, by the way. But until we start looking at the hate and figuring out how to come together as a country to not, not just fucking hate each other so much, honestly, yeah. uh, I don't think any of these other problems are going to be solved easily. True. Yeah. Oh, so, man, it's, um, it's, it's part of a bigger yeah. discussion, but yeah, I, I, I think, I think you're onto something really powerful there. Then yeah. we need to move past that. Th yeah. This is why. Uh, so even if you look at my Twitter bio, it says socialist. I know socialism is is very dear I'm to my shocked. heart. I know yeah. I'm 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 one of those big scary socialists, but I actually uh, I think in in my head I I envision like a political identity and movement that is not socialism and it's not capitalism, hmm. and I would like to call it compassionism. Like, Aww, is it? Like we just need we really need to have compassion for one another. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if the solution comes from some sort of capitalistic ideology or like socialistic ideology. I think we just need to, we just need to treat each other with more compassion. And I, agree. I think if you do that, I think there are better economic gains. I think for all the capitalists out there, I think if you treat everybody better, you're going to have more consumers and you're going to have so, more people. It's true. So and how like, if, if you're a socialist, like I, I hear you, like, uh, conservatives they suck they're like there's a lot of racists out there but guess how you beat racism how you will to treat them with like i'm not saying be nice to your local racist i'm saying let's create a a society where these people don't feel that hatred where they can yeah. actually break through that that thing that's holding them the back i love that idea that racism i love that the problem is is exposure right like we yeah. don't have people that are exposed to other races other religions other cultures other you know who whatever like any other demographic in the world they're all in their like white yeah, i had a i had a quote come to mind from brené mm -hmm. brown and i don't love brené brown but i do appreciate this quote she has some um, wise things that she people does, just overuse otherwise. that shit and yeah, just like, shut the fuck up that's yeah. that's why <laughs> But <laughs> compassion, Spencer. Like oh I read Brene Brown, one, and yeah. I'm now amazing. Fuck like, Brene fuck Brown. You. Fuck you. Just kidding. So I'm just kidding, Brene. Not. There was a thing I saw. Is like it's hard to hate someone up close, and I, I agree. Agreed. You know That's our prox true. our proximity to people oh makes God. a difference. Right. You, know? you you've you've triggered me, Spencer. This is I swear to God, this is the last thing I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, then I have a question for it, you, Will. But and it brings ahead. me back to my my point about compassionism. Um, is uh so ben shapiro our local uh bigot asshole he, he is he uh he's not about a, the wet ass pussy that's for sure yeah the, <laughs> the wet ass p word um p -word. wet ass p word anyways so he's ben making shapiro, a movie right now you heard that right yeah uh, I, I did not know that we'll save that um, for the after show okay okay let, let me let me let me get this point in so um so the Equality Act was voted on uh, by the House, and I it passed the House. And um, Ben Shapiro was really mad about that because he views transgender people as not being like that. He he doesn't want to honor the way that they want to uh, identify. And yeah. and there's this clip of him saying that like. If he was with a transgender person in private, he would respect their preferred pronouns. But, but otherwise, on his show, on his show, <sighs> he refuses 
to use their preferred pronouns and he will use whatever pronouns mm -hmm. that they present as nice, because ben. In his view he doesn't view their gender identity as being valid because according to ben shapiro mm -hmm. there's only two genders and this is this is what just pisses me off is you're totally right spencer is it's these people if you're with them in private they're fucking cowards True. and they will, they will bend and they will make they will be as respectful as possible because they don't want to offend people because well, they're fucking cowards they don't have they do not have the courage to actually stand up for the ideology they believe in second second point in this this is i swear to god this is the last thing i'm gonna say <laughs> There was, there was a woman yes. from a far right militia. Um, I'm not going to say its name because I don't want people looking it up. She was arrested and in court, she denounced the militia that she was part of. This is to my point of in private, these people are fucking cowards yeah. and they will be respectful because they don't actually believe in their ideology. But when they're talking about it in public, they will they will misgender people they will yeah. dead name people they will do whatever it takes to push their ideology that they are that that gives them the popularity that they have true and so here in utah we had this bullshit bill about transgender girls in sports right like everybody yeah. all the conservatives are freaking out about like like transgender girls like dominating in sports like yeah. every male sports like player is gonna like become a woman so that they can like because sports like, is so that they so can, like, important right sports ball like, right <laughs> that is not a thing holy shit like I, and so like spencer cox he was our you know con our republican governor. elected he, official the, the our governor, governor. He's, he's the, he's the he's new governor, governor. Uh, yeah. after our last republican governor in utah this is not a shock to anybody but Spencer Cox has been in attendance in almost every pride like dinner that That's we've true. ever been to or benefit we've ever been to. Um, and we thought, oh, well, maybe he's just a stand in for the governor. I don't know. Like, you know, so he made a statement uh, regarding this transgender sports bill. Um, he said he wouldn't he sign it. He, he said he wouldn't. Cry. Yeah. I know it was it was wonderful. And he said, you know what? If you knew these kids, if you spent time with these kids, you would love them. Yeah. You got to You have to know. He is people. a politician, though. He's early yeah. in his term. I, I agree. He's probably agree. hoping people will forget the shit by the time he has to get reelected. Yeah, but, but, I'm skeptical. But, about sure, it. but I, it's I'm skeptical. true. It's fucking true. But but this 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 is what I'm saying. This this is that's compassionism right there. Yeah. That's he is actually looking at an issue, and may, maybe in a couple months he's going to go back on it, and he's going to be maybe. just as bigoted we'll as all the other conservatives. We'll see. We'll see. But right now he's winning a lot of points with liberals and yeah. with more people to the left of him because he actually has compassion. He's actually looking at the issue objectively and he's thinking, what is best for the people that I'm supposed to represent? Right. And so, I am no Spencer Cox fan. So me saying this about him is a big deal. I, I know it's like a million high Bill fives to Spencer killed. Cox. Yeah. I heard he makes some mean cookies though. But Will, I have yeah. one question for you. Yeah. In the end here <laughs> how often does your antifa that. sell meat okay oh so <laughs> well, thank well, you <laughs> for listening to thirst impressions this week <laughs> be sure to check out the facebook page yeah. the website we got recipes we got twitter um, we, we got, got twitter, twitter thirst pod at thirst pod thirst impressions on instagram it's been fun i'm gonna <laughs> i wish i was there to tuck kevin in you look, can real I, cute. I know, you look I'm real sleepy. cute right now. I'll just I'm a tuck sleepy you in. boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can I just tell you all? Yes. This is the last Just the Tip with Kevin for, for tonight. You gave us the full just shaft the, for five minutes, time. though. Yeah, okay. you get the full shaft sometimes, but just the tip a little more um, before I go to bed. Um, <laughs> listen to the credits. Listen to yeah. the credits, friends. Oh, yeah, if you, if you have not you listened. haven't do it last episode amazing was incredible amazing it's yeah. the outtakes i'm not gonna it make it something it's not i'll just say i'll just say okay. blend is a gem that's all okay oh, dear. so thank you <laughs> thank you for listening to thirst impression <laughs> next week we'll see you guys next week my friends Peace out. <laughs> boom 
fuck Ben Shapiro. And fuck, fuck Ben, ben. Shapiro. He's such an asshole. An He's such ben an Shapiro. asshole. Should I drink this egg yolk right now? Ah, I just wanted to get warm and cozy with it. <laughs> Do you know what bothers me to no end? What? The fact that he's a grown ass man. He doesn't know that pussies get wet. I mean, God damn it. Oh. It's a circle, a circle jerk oh. with one person. Oh. The circle <laughs> of jerks. <laughs> it's the wheel of coming. Oh, coming. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no. Stop. <laughs> Stop, <Wait>. Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have this vision of it spurting out of this wheel. Yeah. Yay, yeah. for drinking. 